rights of your sins. Come down to the river and be baptized. Great to see you all. Keep coming. Come on, come down to the river. and the Spirit of God descended as a dove and a voice cried out from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son. In him I am well pleased. Bless you. Can we follow you? Follow me. Follow me. God bless you. Bless it out of peace, mate. <laughs> so that baby. You remember the baby that was born in Bethlehem? The one that was visited by shepherds, by wise men, by angels. Well, he grew up. Through the waters of baptism. God proclaimed that Jesus was his anointed one. The prophecy was fulfilled. After this, at age 30, 
Jesus began his ministry. So now we're hanging around fishermen, are we? Huh? Well, I'd like to introduce you to some of my friends. This is Simon. Simon was a fisherman before he followed me. Now I'm teaching him how to become a fisher of men. Simon is someone who is really dependable. And this is Matthew. Matthew was a tax collector. And this is James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Or as we like to call them, the sons of thunder. <laughs> and this is Judas. Judas is really good with the figures, so we've put him in charge of our finances. Judas is someone who can really be trusted. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> What do you see? I, I see men, but they look like walking trees. Walking trees? That's no good. Do something about that. How's that? I can see! I can see! Many will believe. Many will believe because of what you've done today. Oh! Uh. Believe this? It's a trick, Bebo! Can't you see? It's just a trick. He's like pretending to be a magician and a sorcerer. Tricks and lies. But anyone can do these false kind of tricks. Even I can do these kind of tricks. Ha! Oh, help me. Help me. I'm blind. Oh, oh, hark. <laughs> Is that a distressed voice? That I hear with mine own ears? Oh, please help me, I'm blind. It's a blind man! <laughs> How could I cure this blind man? How could I cure him? I know! Yeah. Handfuls of dirt! Oh. That could fix him! Oh, please hurry, I'm blind, I it's can't Okay, see. I'm coming, just wait for this. Wait for this, let's just get some handfuls of dirt. And we'll rub it in your eyes! <laughs> Walking trees! It's a miracle! Oh, oh come on, people. Can't you see? He's just a fraudster. He's a con artist. He just out here to trick you. Go home! You Pharisees. You're like whitewashed tombs. Oh. All sparkling and clean on the outside, yet inside, you're really just full of death and decay. Yeah, well, at least we don't waste our words on those who don't understand. Yeah, you tell us! It is true. I do spend my time with outsiders. But I tell you, it is you who do not understand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on. Let's go and talk to some people who we know do understand. Jesus performed many miracles that, during his three years of his ministry. He turned water into wine, made the blind see, the lame walk, and even raised the dead. Miracles were a central part of Jesus' ministry. Imagine what it must have been like to witness those amazing miracles. But those miracles, those were the ones we could see. The most amazing miracles that Jesus was performing is what he was doing on the inside. You see, he was changing people's hearts. He was filling their hearts with love, compassion, and forgiveness. Well, goodness gracious me. Look, I've got so much work to do. There's so much dirt everywhere around here. I've been trying to get all this dirt out of my house for days now, and it's just not working. And I've got the windows to wash and the curtains to put up. And there sits my starstruck sister Mary. <sighs> I'm so cross. Martha, Jesus is in our home. I know that. No, but Jesus is here. Yeah, I know. We've got so much to do. Don't you think we 
to listen to what he has to say. I suppose. Goodness me. So much to do all the time. Martha. Yes. Martha, my dear friend, Martha. Just watch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much for your kind hospitality. But Martha, you're fussing way too much over things, well, that really aren't important. There's only one thing that's important, Martha. It is the main course. Mary has chosen it, and I will not let that be taken from her. <coughs> Martha, the word must be your first priority. There's been a lot of rumours going around town at the moment. <coughs> people have been saying that I am? Well, some are saying that you're John the Baptizer. And some others are saying that you're Elijah. Still, some say that you're one of the prophets. And what about you? <coughs> Who do you say that I am? I say you're the Christ. You are the Messiah. You're the Son of the living God. God bless you, Simon. If you did not get that, those words from reading books or listening to teachers, that secret was given to you from God himself. And I'll let you in on a secret, Simon. You will be called Peter, the rock. And on this rock, I will build my church. A church so expansive and full of so much energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to overcome it. And you will be given the key to open every and any door. There will be no more barriers between heaven and earth, earth and heaven. Well, I thank you for entertaining us. It's great to catch up with you again, but we need to keep going. Goodbye, Mary. Goodbye, Martha. God bless you. We'll see you again soon. Thank you. Jesus had many friends. His 12 closest we'd come to know as the disciples. But these disciples were ordinary men. They were fishermen. They were carpenters. They were labourers. And most of them came from a town called Galilee. The disciples travelled with Jesus throughout his ministry. They studied alone with him and they were there to witness the miracles that he did and were there to listen to him preach and teach with all the crowds. Not all of Jesus' followers were men. Some of his closest friends and followers were women. <laughs> see you come between me and the children. Don't you know that these are a special part of God's kingdom? In fact, unless you have a faith and believe like a child does, you cannot even enter the kingdom of God. Now come on children, come together and come and sit down. I want to talk to you and tell you some stories. One minute we're talking to fishermen, then we're touching leopards, even talking to tax collectors. But now... Well, I'd like to tell you a story today about a shepherd. This shepherd had a hundred sheep. And every night, he would bring them into his sheepfold to make sure that they were safe and sound. And as they were coming into his sheepfold, he would count each one, because he knew them each by name. He'd count them on the way in. 95, 96, 97... 98, 99, 99. There was one missing. What was he going to do? One of his sheep was missing. 
Well, he organised the other shepherds to look after those 99 sheep, rolled up his sleeves, and off he went looking for this one lost sheep. And he searched high and low. He climbed big hills down the other side into the valleys. He waded through the rivers, searched through the forest, until finally he found his one lost sheep. And you know what he did? He picked him up, he put him on his shoulders, and then he carried him all the way back home. And he was so excited about finding this one lost sheep that he called all the other shepherds together, all of his friends and his family, and they celebrated and they had a great big party because he found this one lost sheep. Did you know that it's just like that in the kingdom of God. There is so much more celebration for one person who repents of all of his sin than for 99 other people who do not need to repent of their sin. Now I've got a story for your mums and dads. Oh, here we go. I'd like to tell you a story about a young lady. This young lady had a dowry of 10 gold coins. They were her guarantee to a better life, a life with a good husband. So you could imagine how sad and disappointed she was when one day she discovered she'd lost one of her gold coins. She searched high and low through the house, but she couldn't find it. So she moved all of the furniture out. Still couldn't find it. She picked up a broom and swept every room looking for that one lost coin. And finally she found it. She was so overjoyed. So she called together all of her friends and her family and her neighbours and they celebrated and had a great big party because she found that one lost coin. And did you know it's just like that in the kingdom of heaven when one sinner repents and turns to God, all of the angels celebrate and rejoice for that one lost soul returning to God's kingdom.
I say, whichever of you is without sin, he is the one who should cast the first stone. God. Is there no one left to accuse you? No one, Master. <coughs> then neither do I. Go, and do not sin any longer. and I will continue our trip towards Jerusalem. Jesus the Rabbi was no ordinary teacher. When he taught, he focused on the, on the kingdom and did so with authority. And when he taught, it was in a way that everyone could understand. He often taught with parables, which means stories with a lesson. But Jesus' parables were not fairy tales. They're not just nice little stories. They are the voice of God, the hand of the Saviour, stretched out, calling us to repent and believe. Jesus challenged the norm. While the religious leaders were always arguing and debating and discussing which was the greatest commandment, Jesus' message was simple. Love God and love others. His teaching confused those who expected the Messiah to save the people by leading a revolt against the Romans or enforcing the Old Testament law. The leaders of the church and the leaders of the law would always try to trap Jesus into speaking against the laws of Moses or against the laws of the government. But Jesus never fell into this trap. <coughs> We've heard rumors that Jesus and his disciples are coming here to celebrate the feast for the Passover. Imagine their excitement. So let's we pretend that we are that crowd. And we just heard that Jesus and his followers are coming here to our city. So we all rush to the gates to welcome him as the prophecy fulfilled, is fulfilled. So as we see Jesus and his disciples come, we're going to wave our branches, lay them down to make a path. We have claws we can lay those down to make a pathway for Jesus and his followers to walk on. And then we'll say from the Old Testament, from Psalm 118, those words that were predicted in the prophecy. Hosanna, welcome, son of David, glory to the king. Hosanna in the highest heaven. So we'll do that as we see Jesus and his followers arrive. I think I'm seeing him now. Hosanna! 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 Well, 
I heard you preaching throughout the countryside and I wanted to get a good look at you for myself, but I'm, I'm height deficient, I'm short. <laughs> so I, I climbed this tree so that I could get a good look at you. Well, Zacchaeus, you need to come down immediately because I'm going to your house today. You need to go home and prepare. Lord, right here and now, I'll give away half of my possessions to those gathered here today. And, and, and if I've cheated anyone, I'll, I'll give them back four times the amount. Well, praise God, for salvation has come to this man's house today. For he too is a son of Abraham, and the son of man has come to seek and to save the lost. Come on, Zacchaeus, let's go to your house. Can you imagine? what it must have been like to be a part of the crowd welcoming Jesus at the gates that first Palm Sunday. Jesus loved everyone and his message was for everyone. He ate with tax collectors, sat with lepers, with friends of prostitutes, and even taught women. This confused and angered the Pharisees. How could Jesus associate with such people like this? And how could the kingdom of, of kingdom of heaven welcome such sinners? You can leave your branches and your cloths and follow us. Even though the crowds had welcomed Jesus at the gates, not everyone was happy that he was in the city. You see, both the political leaders and the religious leaders felt threatened by Jesus. Jesus' popularity was growing and reached great heights. Huge crowds would gather wherever he was and the number of his followers was increasing rapidly. The leaders felt that Jesus was just taking things too far and it had to stop. It was time to silence his message. They wanted to kill Jesus but couldn't do anything immediately because the crowds were spellbound. They began to plot against him and put plans in place to put an end to his ministry. Who's there? It's I, Judas. What will you give me to hand Jesus over to you? you give us as a sign? A kiss. I will betray him with a kiss. Don't even think about stuffing it up. Jesus. And Judas chose a kiss in which to show which of them was Jesus. From that point on, Judas looked for the opportunity to betray him. Jesus and his disciples had come to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast of the Passover. This was when the Jewish people remembered how God delivered them from Egypt so long ago. They would gather and eat a sacrificial lamb, unleavened, unleavened bread, and drink wine as they recalled the events of the past so long ago when God saved them from the hand of the Egyptians. But this year it would be different. Jesus was about to give a new meaning to this meal. Let's go see this we last come supper. Through so we can make room for those in the back. Friends, you have no idea how I've looked forward to eating this Passover meal with you before I enter my time of suffering. This will be the last time we eat together here on earth. The next time we will be together in my Father's kingdom eating this meal. But 
Father God, I thank you for this bread and I pray your blessing on it. Take and eat. This bread is my body given for you. Eat it in memory of me. Father God, I thank you for this wine that you have blessed us with it with. And I ask your blessing on it too. This cup is the cup of the new covenant. Written in my blood. Blood poured out for you. For the forgiveness of your sins. Even now the hand of the one who is to betray me is on this table. It is true that the path that the Son of Man must walk down has, has already been mapped out for him. There are no surprises there. But for the one who is to betray me, this is his last chance. This is doomsday. The end. Soon the lightning will strike and the sheep will be scattered. I'd follow you to the ends of the earth, Lord. Peter, I tell you the truth. Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Lord, this betrayal you speak of, surely you don't mean me. Judas, stop playing games with me. Go and do what you must do. <coughs> Friends, my heart grows heavy as my time draws near. Come. Let's go to the garden and pray. My father, this burden is too much for me to bear. If there is any other way, Lord, please take it from me. Yet not my will, Lord, but yours be done. My father, if there is no other way, then I am ready to drink of this cup. May your will be done, Lord. Oh, come on, wake up! Are you going to make a night of it? Come on. The time has come when the Son of Man is to be handed over into the hands of his betrayers. Let's get going. Look, here comes my betrayer now. How goes it, Rabbi? A kiss, Judas? Mm -hmm. Come on. Oh. Friend! Oh. Why this charade? You come at me with swords and clubs? 
like I'm some kind of criminal, and yet all this time I've been preaching and teaching in the temple, and you've not laid a hand upon me. You are a criminal. Take him away. Come on. You have only done this to fulfill what the prophets say. That's enough of your lies. Not so tough now, are we? It was here at Gethsemane that Jesus came to pray with his followers. It is here in the garden where we see the human side of Jesus. He knew what was going to happen. He knew what was coming next. He knew the great suffering that he would have to endure. He prayed to God, his Father, to bring about some other way. If only it could be done without such great suffering. But in the end, Jesus knew what he had to do and he was willing to do it because of his love for each one of us. Oh, you are here to be witnesses, but not only witnesses. You are here to be sure that there's a judgment tonight. There's going to be some judgment. Can you resolve this tonight? Come on down. Come and gather in, everyone. Thank you for making the effort to come out. Thank you, children, for coming out. I know it's late. Thank you very much. As you can see, we too can draw a crowd. And we need to draw a crowd because it's important what's happening here tonight. Gotta get ourselves some judgment tonight. We need to have a judgment. But the person who has to enact that judgment has to be Pilate. We need Pilate out here now. You get Pilate out here. Come on, Pilate, wake Pilate. up. We haven't got a word. And a judgment occurs, so help us, people. Let's get Pilate out here. Come, Come on, on, people. Get Pilate. Pilate. Court. How dare you wake me up at this hour of the night? And what do you want? You want Jesus! Jesus, it's, it's time that he It's time for his judgment! You have seen all the things that he's been doing. He's become a cancer among the hearts and the minds of these people. It's time for his judgment! Have you quite finished? <laughs> Bring Jesus to me. You want to bring him out? Yeah, come on, Rosie, bring Jesus out. Bring him 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 out. Look at him. He the law. He's not so tough now, yeah. is he? Yeah. Look at him, Peter. <laughs> Tell me, Jesus, are you really the king of the Jews? He's no like king of ours. He's a blasphemer. You be quiet. I ask again. Are you the king of the Jews? If you say so. Oh, look, look at Herod's words! Heresy. You heard it, people! Heresy. You should be screaming at this guy! You should take your authority! How do you hear all the things they're saying about you? What have you got to say? I find no fault in this man. How can you find no fault with him? He's running around saying you've been fast! He's undermining your authority! Don't you realise, Jesus, that I have the power to put you to death? And you should put him to death for the things that he has done! The only authority you have was given to you from above. Oh. So you are a king then? My kingdom is not of this world. That's heresy right there! He claims he's more important than you are! He says he's a king! He calls himself our governor! He needs to be punished! He's not authority here at all! Clearly! Look at all these people who've come out! They want him to die! Jesus, 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 I put you this suggestion. I find no fault in this man, so I suggest I release Jesus. You can't release Jesus! Or 
or the alternative is to release the notorious murdering Barabbas.
them. But they don't know what they're doing. Helplessness, pain, suffering, confusion, anger, lost. Those were the range of emotions that the disciples felt that day. And anyone who loved Jesus when they saw what had happened on that Good Friday. They didn't understand. Was this the end? Was this really how the story was going to end? Was this all there is? They had walked along Jesus with Jesus for his whole journey. And was this going to be the finish of it? After Jesus had died, they took down his body from the cross, wrapped it in linen cloth, placed it in a tomb, and rolled a great stone in front of the entrance. And then they went away. Imagine their sadness. Three days later, the three women had gathered spices and went back to the tomb to prepare Jesus' body. But when they got there, the stone had rolled away.
friends. Why the sad faces? Don't you know? I have been to heaven and returned again. And I tell you, it truly is a glorious place. And all authority on heaven and on earth has been given to me. So I want each of you to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them everything that I have taught you. And remember, I have risen. I have risen. And surely I am with you always, till the end of time. to know that Jesus is alive. He's no longer dead, but he is risen. My name is Mark Hansen. I'm the pastor of St. Peter's Lutheran Church, and it's been a real joy to share this Christ Walk production with you. They often say it's the greatest story ever told, but we know it's not just a story, that he is alive, and it is alive and well, and that it is something that is real in our hearts. We can hear a lot about Jesus' life and his, what he lived and his suffering, his death, and his resurrection in the scriptures, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And in John, we read a wonderful story about how he rose Lazarus. And it says here, when Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come into the world. And we too believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And our prayer for you this Easter is that you too will know to live and to experience once again Jesus as the resurrection and the life. So go, and then one who forgives us all of our sins. Go in the one who raises us from the dead. Go in the one who in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace and serve the Lord.